All right, so uh, it's not been too long since we've kicked out the last video, although it took us a little while to, to make it over the holidays. So I guess uh, I'll start with uh, what I've been up to. Largely, I've been going kind of crazy with my 3D printer. Um, I discovered how to use CAD programs, and so I've been printing like shelves and small things for knickknacks and stuff like that with with customized pockets like my wife has like these essential oils she's really into the essential oils and so i i made a shelf that has like the diameter of the different types of uh, bottles that she has so that they don't just kind of like can't just get shoved off the shelf um and then i have i have a bunch of these tuxes that i've kind of collected over the years i've got like seven of them and they are all just kind of hanging around on my desk. And so I ended up making a vertical shelf uh, that's sitting right to the left of my monitor here with all the tuxes stacked on top of each other. So, uh, yeah, discovering a CAD program was either really good or really bad for me. I guess it depends on your point of view. Yeah, cool. I um, I have been muting, muting myself and um, from the outset, I want to apologize for the some of the audio in this in this video, uh, someone is doing some kind of renovations in our building. Uh, so there's there's drilling and hammering and concrete cutting going on. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll try and chop out as much as we can, but you might you might hear a bit of that. Uh, the joys of apartments, hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah uh really excited that we um yeah we put the the last video out um last week and it seems like we're gonna get into a, a good cadence in 2021 so i'm really excited for for what we can come up with and uh yeah today i think we're we're gonna look at so the last video was looking at you know prs and and particularly you know if i'm submitting a pr or if i'm starting to review a pr what are the things that i um, that I should be looking at, uh, you know, before actually reviewing the code or anything like that. And so we wanted today to get into when we start to look at the code, uh, how do we do that and how do we use the GitHub interface? Um, you know, what does that give us, uh, rather than looking at it on our local machine, um, and then starting to look through a, a fairly simple PR and, um, you know, take a look at the changes that are in there start and have a bit of a talk about have a look at the changes in there and have a bit of a talk about you know what are the things that, that we notice and what are the things that um we might look at uh we might make comments about um <laughs> anyway so uh hoping that the drilling uh, holds off a little bit um but i think we should just dive straight into it yep let's get right into it so I think let's look at um, the home assistant skill because uh, there's, there's a few PRs that have been sitting in here that, that we need to take a look at. And let's, let's go to the second one, the feature entity availability check. Um, so we, we've already looked uh, in the last video, you know, at the details of this PR. So, um, so we want to just jump straight to what is the code changes that have actually happened and, and what are we looking at there? So uh, in the tabs at the top, we'll, we'll jump to files changed and that's going to give us the, you know, all of the changes that have happened. Um, and so because this isn't too big of a, uh, of a PR, we can just review all of them at once. Um, like we can see that, that it's broken into two commits, but you know, that we're only talking about 31 new lines and eight deletions, um, which you can see in the, in the top right corner. Um, so, so I'd just, I'd just review this all at once. If, um, if it was a bigger PR, you know, often you get PRs where there's, you know, 25, <laughs> 20 different files that have been edited, yeah. you know, or one file has been, has had hundreds of lines changed and, you know, it's addressing different things with different commits. Um, and, um, and in that case, you know, I'd go through commit by commit. Um, but, but in this case, uh, we want to keep it simple. 
if we, well, maybe it's worth saying actually, if we if we did want to go through commit by commit, um, in the top left of your screen, uh, you can see changes from all commits. And if you click on that all commits, you can actually select individual ones. So um, if if it was, you know, one PR that contained a number of substantial changes, um, and hopefully the the person submitting the PR had had structured their changes in a really nice way. <laughs> so if if it was if it was a big PR uh, uh, and you know there were a number of significant changes, but the you know the, the code author had been really good and structured their commits in a in a logical way where you know each each uh, each change that sort of came together was, was its own commit. Then, then we can go in and we can review the changes on a per commit basis. Um, and sometimes you, you really need to do that uh, because it's just not possible to look at hundreds of lines of changes and know, you know how different things are going to affect each other. Um, so, so that's a really useful feature. But, but for this one, we're just going to do it all in one. Um, so you can see that in this, uh, it gives you a really nice way of seeing what's been added, what's been deleted, and what's been changed. So sometimes they're innocuous, you know, line 71. Uh, Looks like a tab moved. disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is which could be a linter. Um, you know, a lot of the linters will, will do that for you, which is good. Um, and then we can see that there's a new routine um, for the entity availability check. Um, and then they've added a call to that, to that check uh from a number of places throughout the code um so what this interface does uh is a it lets us see the code before we load it onto our machines you know we, we don't know we haven't had any malicious people in the, in the community trying to like get get malicious code down onto machines but you know if you're if you're downloading code from other people that's going to run Particularly, you know, if you're not running in a VM or, or, or have other security measures in place, you know, you want to know what the code is before you just pull it down onto your computer and, and run it and say, yeah, do whatever you want. Um, so th this is a really smart way of, of, you know, just doing that basic check first up. Um, the other thing this interface lets us do is it lets us comment on really specific uh, pieces so yeah. you know instead of just writing having to write a comment in the in the conversation view of a pr that says oh in that section you know around line 120 ish there you know i thought that the the variable name could have been um could have been better or, or something like that you know in this if, if we had uh something like that here we can click on one of those um one of those pluses to the left um or not so after i figured out that i should be logged in because why wouldn't you to be able to yeah. make a comment uh that that changes the orientation of your screen and this is what it actually would look like if you were logged in so now that you're logged in so i'm just gonna you can see along the side here that now when i hover over a line there's a little plus and this was what chris was talking about earlier or was talking about if I didn't cut it out. We'll find out in the future. Uh, <laughs> but, the magic uh, of editing. Exactly. And this is <laughs> this gives you the ability to comment on specific lines. And I believe you can actually do a like a multi-line comment. Yeah, if you click and drag yeah. on the plus, you can do a multi-line comment to hi highlight um, a section instead of going line by line. Yeah, that's a new one, but it's so good. Um, yeah, so it, it means that you know you can you can make comments about very specific pieces of the code, and then it's really easy for everyone to see exactly what you're referring to. Um, you know, rather than having to just try and describe where in the code something happens. Um, so so yeah, that's that's the benefit here. So we we check the code before we load it onto our computer. It gives us a really easy way to provide comments on the code, um, and when we're finished with it, it provides a really easy way, a really unambiguous way of saying what we 
think of the code. Um, so, you know, once we've gone through and checked it all uh, at the, and, you know, done any comments that we want to do, at the very end, we're going to click that green button in the top right corner that says review changes. And that gives us the ability to do one final overarching comment that will come above everything else um, and let you say, are you just giving feedback without an explicit approval or, you know, or anything? Are you approving? And in this case, you know, from my cross perspective, if you say that you're that in your view, this code should be approved, that means you yourself are putting your reputation, staking your reputation on the fact that this code could get immediately merged into the code base and pushed out to 50,000 devices and get used immediately. You know, that, that to us is what approved means. It doesn't mean, you know, yes, I think this is a good feature. It doesn't mean, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. It means the exact code that, that this PR has at the moment could get merged right now with no further view, no further review from anyone else. And, and, you know, and I would stake my personal reputation on that being the case. Um, so no pressure, no, no pressure. <laughs> it's like, you know, this is, this is what we really want to want to get to, um, is that we can, um, I know, think we can share the load of, of reviewing PRs around, but, but in order to do that, you know, we need to have very clear, um, responses of, of whether, whether I believe that the code can be, can be added or not, because, you know, it's really easy to say, yeah, sounds good. And then, you know, uh, another maintainer comes along and, and looks at it and goes, oh yeah, I think, I think, um, you know, Jeffrey here has, uh, has, has looked at it. He seems to think it's good. So I'll merge it in. Um, but of course, Jeffrey may not have actually read all the code and then we don't know, you know, what's in there and you know, we don't know anything. So, um, the, it's, it's really, we want to try and get to this point where we're, we're either saying it's, it's totally okay to just do a comment. If, if you, you know, if you've reviewed it and, um, you had some feedback you wanted to provide, but either you think some changes need to happen or you're just not confident that it could be merged yet, then that's fine. Just do it as a comment or as a request changes. Um, but if you, if you really believe that it can be, can be merged in, then, then we want to prove, um, and, and that's the one that's going to help us to get, uh, changes merged into the code base and shipped out to everyone the quickest. So, um, you know, there's some pressure, but there's, there's also some payoff there. So, yeah. And I think it's really important too. Um, I've found that in the past outside of the computer world, if you set expectations for people to live up to and they care about the thing that they're doing, oftentimes more often than not they're, they're going to live up to that expectation so if we set the expectation that you know if you mm -hmm. say that this is approved it reflects on you then people are more likely to you know take that more seriously and and they'll yeah. live up to that yeah. yeah it actually it reminds me of um so at, at university we had uh, a mountaineering mountaineering club sorry i need to pronounce my t's i'm australian Sorry about that, but uh, we had a mountaineering club, so you know, an outdoors club, and um, you know we do climbing and, and all sorts of different stuff. Um, anyway, at, at one of the trips, a caving trip, uh, there was an accident where uh, someone um, didn't rig up their abseil device correctly, and uh, it got checked by two or three people, and then they went to abseil and, and fell, uh, and thankfully you know, they were okay. They, they did, I think in that case, they broke a bone. Um, and it was, you know, it was, a needed a rescue, um, from, from the team that were there. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't a good scenario, uh, but talking to the university afterwards, you know, anytime there was even a, a small accident, we'd always do a, a big, you know, post incident review. And, um, you know, talking to the university, they were, they were like, you know, why wasn't someone checking it? We we're like, well, we had, we had you know two or three people checking it but like all of them kind of looked at it and assumed that and, and thought that it was fine 
Um, and so the university said, well, we need to have more people checking it. And, <laughs> and I pushed back and I said, well, actually, I think the problem was that we had too many people checking it. So because we had three people in a line, person number one assumes that someone else is going to catch it. And so, and person number two thinks, well, someone's already checked it and someone else is going to check it next after me. So like, you know, sure. It looks fine to me. And then the third person goes, well, two people have already checked it. Like it mm -hmm. looks fine. And we're, you know, that's where we actually went wrong. And so we, we changed things so that there was one person reviewing, reviewing, uh, reviewing, you know, in that case, uh, belay devices. Um, and so that put the responsibility solely squarely on that one person. And we didn't have any change. We didn't have any problems after that. Um, or, you know, I, I'm sure that there will be problems in the future, but like, you know, the, you can, you can then, uh, I don't want to say important blame, but there's just the responsibility there. Um, and we know, we know that when we're doing something that we are taking responsibility for that. And so that's what we really want to get to here as well. There's a reason why they call it get blame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just saying. Uh, so moving on, we've, uh, we've taken a look at the, the web browser. Obviously we're not going to approve or comment anything right now. Um, no. No. I, I, have actually gone through this previously. Um, I specifically, uh, you know, part of it's laziness. Uh, I've had I've had a bunch of stuff that I've had to do in my personal life, but this this PR in particular has been on my list of things to actually check. And when I looked at it, I thought it might be a good example of, of how to pull down the code for this type of video. So the uh, this pull request ultimately is is checking the state of an entity uh, before taking action on it and previous to this uh, if an entity existed there was no check to see what its current state was this if the in home assistant you can have an entity or an, an endpoint. entity might be a light or a switch or a thermostat or whatever yeah exactly you can have an endpoint that's defined that has some sort of different state like unavailable for example um, where this will happen particularly with light bulbs if someone's gone and flicked the light switch on you then the power has been mm. cut to the entity it's unavailable mm. that doesn't mean that there is no entity so uh, home assistant will register that yes there's actually an entity involved in this and mm -hmm. so the previous code was looking for you know if not entity and so that's just saying, well, if the entity doesn't exist anymore, like I've deleted it from Home Assistant, then the code would mm. do whatever that's supposed to do. This pull request yeah. is supposed to prevent the Home Assistant um, skill from attempting to take action on something that actually can't handle the action right now. So that's that's the whole yeah. purpose of, of this pull request. Some of the things that immediately stand out to me is, uh, is that, you know, on the method itself, uh, they've they've used a, an underscore at the start of the method name, um, and so if you're not, if you're not familiar with this convention, it's a, a private method in Python. Um, so it, it's not it's not like other programming languages where you cannot access the private method. It, it's more of a convention rather than an enforced rule. But what it does is say, you know, this is an internal method only. Um, things outside of the skill shouldn't be using this. And so at any point in time in the future, we can change the functionality of this method and only take into consideration, you know, the skill itself rather than, you know, anything else that might be trying to piggyback off the top of it. So uh, moving to the next character, <laughs> we're going to take this one character at a time. No, kidding. Um, but uh you know, naming naming variables and naming methods is always um, is always a big part of of both writing and reviewing code and and reading other people's code. Um, uh, check availability seems like a, a pretty good method name. Um, I actually made a comment here about self .log .debug because I think that. Um, because we actually have a dialogue down here that that's going to tell us when something's available, we don't need the debug to tell us the current state. 
So I just put a comment in here saying probably should remove the debug code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The check availability, what would be very helpful in this case would actually be to have doc strings. Uh, a doc string generally is used to tell someone else about the method that you are, you're doing. So what type of variable you take in, uh, if you've taken in a variable as an argument, what the output mm -hmm. is, if something returns, um, if it, if it has some sort of external dependencies, some of these things are going to become less important as, um, Python is adding things like type hints and, and other, um, other things. But in the meantime, it would be really helpful if I knew what this, what this method was attempting to return. So we take a look and it says, well, it's going to return true or it's going to return false. Um, when we were looking at if not HA entity or not self dot check availability, it returns nothing. And sorry, that function will return as in it quits the, it quits the loop of that skill, right? So it's an early exit. It would be helpful if I knew that because of the way that this is particularly worded, it's not self dot availability. It would be helpful when I came up here to check this, that I knew that this was going to return true if the device was available, right? or if the device yeah. is not available because it's unclear yeah. from the method name what the what the intent behind this is yes we can parse it out we absolutely can take a look like the, there's nothing wrong with the code in here um, it's clear it's mm. concise i understand what it's doing uh mm. it would just doc string help much better like if i'm if i'm jumping between right the yeah. point of this was we had already i i we took an aside and we were just looking, scrolling through the code. And I looked at this and then I had to scroll back up here to read this section again, to figure out what is it actually returning? If I had the doc yeah. string, I could have just read the doc string like, Oh, well it's returning, you know, it's returning true yeah. if the device is actually available. Yeah. And it's about like how much, you know, any human, no matter how intelligent you are, no matter how experienced you are with code, there's only so much that there's only so much, ram that you have in your brain and yeah. you know when you when you have a particular um flow that you that you have in your in your head you know at the moment uh and then you go oh, okay and i need to figure out what that's returning so i'm going to go up to there and if it's a doc string you know you just read what does this return it returns you know true if if the entity is available it's like great that doesn't require any more brain space yeah. What the hell? Um, oh, sorry, a random pop up. Uh, whereas, if you actually have to, you know, work through the logic of that method, even even quite a simple method like this one, it's it's taking up that active memory um, and probably bumping some other things, and then you have to then go back and and rethink through um, wherever it is you were coming from. So. Yep, I feel yeah. the obligatory XKCD. Have Have you seen that one where? Uh, the guy is is really concentrating, like he's got this flow chart working in his brain, and then someone comes in and asks him if he wants a sandwich, and then the next frame is poof, everything's gone, and he starts from the beginning all over again. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So the um, other, so yeah, dog strings definitely a great, great thing. Um, the other thing that yeah. could have helped this, even without a doc string, is actually changing the method name to a question. For example, if the mm -hmm. if if the string was is entity available, then mm. that leads to a, like a natural understanding of a true or false, like what the output of this um, method is going to be. Yeah. So there's a bunch of you you see like this this is called a bunch of times the same kind of um, statement of if well, not. Well. Go ahead. Well, so what, what, uh, one of the things that stood out to me and what I, what I think you were getting towards is, um, you know, when we look at where this method is being used, in each case, uh, we have a, if not HA entity or not check availability, then, uh, you know, do something um, mostly early return yeah. or maybe always early return. Anyway, but it, it looks like yep, in every single, return. in every single case, 
uh, we always do this along with calling this method. Um, and I think that's a really good code smell for, um, is code smell a, a understandable term, understood term? A common I don't term? know. I would have said, uh, well, you're going with dry, right? Do not repeat yourself. Yeah. 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 yeah the, the old dry principle, do not repeat yourself. Yeah. Um, basically a code smell is like, you know, you, you start to see patterns and like, when you see different patterns, you're like, ah, I think, you know, this thing might be, you know, uh, might be happening here. Um, and so in this case, every single time we call check availability, we're also calling, well, we're also checking if not HA entity. And I think that's generally a really, um, uh, a really easy way to see that maybe we should check whether HA entity exists or not in the method itself, um, rather than doing it every single time, uh, everything, every single time in the conditional. Um, yeah. I think that the, uh, the original author here was following the pattern that existed previously, right? So you're seeing, yeah. Yeah. you're seeing that pattern existing, but like you said, um, if I'm seeing this exact same code all over the place, I might even, uh, make a method itself. Even if I didn't want to add this, this check into, because, um, so the counterpoint to adding the HA entity check is then your method is no longer doing a thing. It's now doing two different things. And how do you quantify that appropriately? So it might be better off in the long run to have a check availability and then call that in another method that, that just says like, um, something like is actionable and is actionable checks the output of this here. And so you run is actionable and it runs the code and it either returns or it doesn't. Um, that's, that's just another way to kind of tackle that. But at any time that you see the same, literally the same cut and paste code, uh, it is a good indication that there's probably a better way to do this. Now, there's nothing wrong with, with this per se, right? Because the original uh, knit.py had these lines in there. But um, if you're going in and you're, you're taking the time to clean up the code anyways, you, uh, it might be a good opportunity to, to rethink how this might be accomplished. Um, so that pretty much is the totality of what we're looking at here. Uh, you can see that I've actually come in here and viewed some of the stuff um, because, like I said, I've I looked at this before. I've looked at this a few times. I just haven't actually gotten around mm. to testing this yet. So this little mm. thing just tells us, like, don't show me these things because I've gone through and viewed them. And, um, yes, they're technically yeah. changes, but in these cases we're talking about um, dialogue changes. And for two of these languages, I actually speak them. Um, and the check... I just have to assume that's correct. So, uh, you know, I mark them as viewed and, and I'm just not going to bother making comment there. Yeah, but that's another useful um, tool in, in this interface, it, you know, particularly when you're talking about larger changes um, that are spanning across many files. Uh, I, I definitely use this one to keep track of what I've checked and what I haven't. Um, yeah. And, you know, you get that beautiful progress bar at the top. Uh, that, that helps to gamify your experience and, <laughs> and encourage you to finish it off. <laughs> it didn't work in this case. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Tony, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Uh, this has nothing to do with you. <laughs> no, but thank you for uh, for a good PR um, and for the other all the other work that you've been doing on on particularly Yarn Assistant. Um, it's been really cool. Okay, so. Uh, we've made, we made a comment, did we? Yep. I made a yeah. comment up here about just oh, not right. needing the, uh, not needing the debug code. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So assuming we are happy with this code, we know that there's no, you know, it's not trying to install a rootkit on your device or something. Um, more likely, you know, it's not just going to sit in, in some endless loop and, you know, hollow your system resources or, or something silly like that. Um, it's pretty clear. It's pretty, it's very logical. Um, you know, it, it, it addresses a real, um, 
a real issue. Uh, I think you know it's, it's good on all of those fronts. Um, yeah, would probably be better if we if we had a doc string in there um, just to just to help people who are coming along to to really quickly understand um, what the what the methods purpose is, um, what the input um, argument is, what like what what do we expect HA entity to be? Like if I pass in a Boolean value, is that gonna, you know, if I pass in a sorry about the tapping. If I pass in a uh, if I pass in a Boolean value or or a you know an, a random object or a you know whatever, um, is is that gonna handle those? Um, probably not. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then and then what what's the return? What's our expected return values? And in this case, it's a, a Boolean. Um, yeah, but I think I think it's a simple enough method that it uh, it it doesn't really need any inline um, commenting other than a doc string. Well, and in, in, in actual fact, they've they've kind of done like the first line of the doc string as a comment above the method. Um, and so partly it's just shifting that, um, maybe, maybe tweaking it a bit, but shifting it down, uh, you know, inside, uh, three, a pair of three quotes. Um, so I just want to hone in on that just a little bit. Uh, the, the difference between a doc string and leaving comments in your, in your method, uh, comes down to your ID, right? Or. Um, if you're using REPL, so you're you're interactively using Python and you've you've imported somebody's method, you can actually use the built-in Python tools to get at the doc strings to, um, you know, either your linter will do it or whatever for your IDE. So there are some actual technical differences between having a mm. comment and having a doc string. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and in in a lot of our projects, we use we automatically extract the doc strings to um, populate our technical documentation. So, if you're on our read the docs um, site for for you know if you're doing skill development, um, then all of that all of that documentation is automatically pulled out of the code. So that means that you know we don't have to maintain separate documentation to our code. Yeah. It sort of self generates itself. So. I had a lot of fun today, um, kind of digging around through through some code that I've looked at significant amount because hashtag lazy. Um, I'm sorry, Tony. I've looked at your code a ton. I just haven't gotten to the point to uh, to actually run it on my own. And then when we started doing these video series, I selfishly wanted to hold this one because I'd already looked at it several times and um, I thought it would be a good example for us to run through. So we will get this through, um, but it'll happen when we finish off the, the video series for this, uh, this set. So we really covered today using the Git UI. So specifically GitHub, we used a lot of the features in GitHub for doing a review. We added some comments, you know, we took a look at the, the file in the web browser with the express idea that um, we believe it's a bad idea to just pull in somebody's uh, code and then run it without taking a look at it. So the, the web UI kind of gives you a pretty quick glance at what's in there and you can quickly scoot through and make sure that there's nothing malicious or even accidentally harmful in, in the code. And so ultimately that's, that's what we wanted to impart with this one is just to show you some of the stuff that you can do as a reviewer with the web UI. And uh, I think next time we'll get into actually pulling the code down onto your system and actually showing you how to run a specific PR. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. So that, that's it for this video. Uh, I think, um, if you have any questions about whatever we covered, then please feel free to leave a comment, like it, uh, ask us questions about things that you want, want to know about for future videos. Um, and yeah, come and join us in the, in Mycroft chat, uh, in the, in the dev channel or, uh, or take a look at, you know, 
some of the Git repos in, in Microsoft's um, GitHub. There's a, there's a few PRs there that, you know, be happy for you to, to take a, take a look at and review. Yeah, so, comments would be really great because uh, for the most part we see the the views on a on a video, but we actually have no idea whether we're we're even connecting with anybody out there. So right now uh, we're just kind of pissing into the wind, as they say. <laughs> they do they say that in Australia for sure. <laughs> it just who knows what it means. Um, <laughs> yeah, please leave a comment. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that. Your frustration level is just precious. <laughs> Maybe we just leave it there. Please right. leave a comment. Uh, yeah, we want to make sure that, that we're spending our time efficiently. Um, and so, you know, knowing that people uh, value these and, and get value out of these uh, is, is really important to us. So um, let us know. Until next time, then. Until next time. Ciao. Ciao.